Prologue 1, ID Prime. It has been over a single anno cycle since this war began. Who am I? To truly understand, we must go back to the beginning. Back when the planet was new. This is Cybertron, home to my people. In its golden age, it was a thriving utopia, led by the first 13 Cybertronians, known as the Primes. But while the 13 were united, Cybertron was not. As the cycles passed, Energon, the source of life throughout all of Cybertron, had become scarce, barely enough for everyone to share. In the end, Covet for Energon would create conflict between the Thirteen and between all of Cybertron. On one side was founded those who believed in free autonomy. These were known as the Autobots. They fought for the freedom to choose, the freedom to unite, and the freedom to share Energon with all despite the drought. On the other side, were those who believed in subjugation and culling those who would deceive the masses, those who would covet the Energon for themselves. These were the Decepticons, an ironic name for an ironic crusade, as while they preach of freedom through revolution, they themselves are the true deceptors, even to themselves. When all was said and done, however, the Decepticons led by their legendary leader, Megatronus, would claim victory in the end, claiming the life of the Autobot leader, Sentinel Zeta Prime. Thus, the era of conflict had ended, and the era of deception began. Hibernation cycle complete. Now initiating reawakening process. I knew not where I was, nor who I was. All I knew was that I had a voice. A voice and a name. Optimus then begins to hear the sound of wind coming from um, the door, leading him to head toward it and open the door. Optimus is then distracted by the sight of what appears to be a rusted fallen off corner of the door. He kneels down toward it in curiosity, but then hears a loud crash coming from the surface, leading him to step out of the room and over the rusted corner. As Optimus comes close to seeming, a seemingly dead end, something triggers an outline of a door to appear, followed by the door opening to reveal a hidden elevator. Optimus then enters the elevator, taking it up all the way to the surface for what felt like a few minutes, despite the earlier crash sounded like it was somewhere nearby. After a bit, the hidden elevator opens from the side of a piece of debris, Optimus steps out, only to see what looks to be ruins of some sort. There was nothing but silence. As I roamed, there was not a spark in sight. All I could find was ruin. Ruins of a heated battle. Primus knows how long ago. Optimus then looks to his side. Realizing that what caused the crash was a giant crane that rusted and fell onto the ground, Optimus would then notice a light coming from a certain direction uphill. He followed the light, only to see that it was the light of one of Cybertron's suns piercing through the clouds. 
Optimus then looks straight ahead, noticing a vast metal wasteland and what appears to be an old road leading somewhere. Just then, a blue light begins to glow in Optimus's chest, seemingly signaling something to him. By pure instinct, and with little option, I chose to do what I could. I chose to transform. As time passed, there was nothing in sight, nothing but an endless road and a metal wasteland. My focus solely on the road ahead, though I had questioned my mind a few times, believing I had seen lights of faraway cities, but kept my eyes forward, unsure and untrusting of my own judgment. My wheels kept rolling until I finally saw it, the city of Kaon. The moment Optimus approached the main gates of the city, he transformed back into his robot mode. Optimus then looks around, noticing something. Not a guard in sight, and yet, despite my doubts, I chose to take that first step without caution. With no one in sight, Optimus casually walks up to the main gate of Kaon. As he reaches out to, the, to open the door, a small and unnoticeable spark from the tip of Optimus's finger hits the door, electrifying and causing it to open automatically. Optimus looks in awe as he sees the vast city within after the gates open, leading him to walk inside. Optimus does nothing but walk forward into the city, looking around in amazement at, at the grand structures that many Cybertronians pass by, both in sky and streets. Suddenly, a Cybertronian in its vehicle mode passes by swiftly, causing a glowing liquid in the streets to splash upon Optimus, covering the insignia on his left shoulder. Meanwhile, a pink female Cybertronian shrouded in a glowing Cybertronian robe is wandering through Kaon. As he arrives at an intersection of sorts, Optimus notices this Cybertronian girl run up to a corner, the girl not noticing Optimus staring at her. After turning a corner, the girl would look around and see what appeared to be her intended destination, what looks to be a coliseum of sorts, far in the distance within the center of the city. Finally! Without caution, the girl attempted to cross the street, but disregarded the traffic causing a large Cybertronian in its vehicle form to nearly run her over. The girl blinded by the headlights of the Cybertronian. Just before she could hit, it be hit, however, Optimus instantly intervenes, tackling her out of the way and back onto the sidewalk she was crossing from. After safely rolling and standing up undamaged, Optimus looks down to see the girl in his arms. As the girl shakes her head, the hood falls off, revealing her visage much to Optimus's curious astonishment, as he could not take his eyes off her. Are you... okay? As the girl then looks up to face Optimus, she freezes for a moment, oddly mesmerized by the sight of Optimus, as if looking into his eyes are keeping her compelled to be frozen. Yeah. The girl then suddenly snaps out of it and pushes Optimus away, standing up on her own. Hands off! I could have avoided it. Yet you did not. Hence, I took the initiative to rescue you. Hey! I'm not some damsel in distress. I can rescue myself. Got it? Optimus is taken aback for a moment, but nods his head in acknowledgement. Understood. The girl then points her finger in Optimus's face in slight irritation. This never happened. I was never here, and pray to Primus I never have to remind you of that. Just then, the Viacon that nearly ran the girl over, along with a second Viacon, walk over to Optimus and the girl. Hey, you two! 
Oh, Primus. May we help you? What do you think you were doing? Robot modes in this sector are unauthorized in preparation for today's events. Vehicle modes only. Forgive me, but I know not what you mean. Uh, he's the one who nearly ran me over, genius. Oh. Wait a minute. You're the trespasser who came through the gate. We noticed you on the security feed. Wait, what? Who are you? And how'd you open the gate? Only authorized personnel can open the gate. I do not know. I reached out and it just opened. Oh, right. The door just automatically opened without direct authorization. Oh, that's rich. Either you were given a vector code or you stole it from someone else. Now, what's your designation? Designation? Oh, for Primus' sake, he's asking you your name. I do not know. Oh, Spark, we're doomed. Just what kind of game are you playing? You know, now that you mention it, he's acting like a newborn protoform. So why don't I let you guys settle this since I'm not involved? Oh, you're with him. You're involved. Oh, come on. He saved me from being run over by you. That doesn't make me associated with him. And whose fault is that? Uh, your Speedy? The Viacon begins to analyze Optimus, noticing his body's dirty state due to traveling along the road for what may have been several days. He does seem to be a bit worse for wear. You think his memory module's damaged? I couldn't care less. An undesignated bot is a stray, and strays are to be processed. The first Viacon soldier gets behind Optimus, ready to jump him if need be. Whether you know who you are or not, you're coming with us. Overhearing this, Alita attempts to make a getaway by sneaking away, but looking back to Optimus saving her causes her to hesitate. <sighs> Primus, help me for what I'm about to do. As the first Viacon soldier grabs Optimus' shoulder, Alita steps in, accidentally causing the Viacon to back his hand off of Optimus' shoulder. Look, I can clear this all up. My- Wait! Look! A soldier then points at the insignia on Optimus' shoulder, to which the first Viacon inadvertently reveals due to accidentally wiping the liquid off of his shoulder. You're an... Autobot? The two Viacons then draw out their weapons. So, you're a couple of rebel scum- Whoa, 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 uh, I'm sure this is all a big misunderstanding. Rebel scum? Autobot? I do not understand. You know, that'd be more believable if you hadn't referred to him as an Autobot. Sparks. Suddenly, Alita swipes and kicks both Viacon soldiers back, realizing they can't talk their way out of this anymore. W wait I'm sure we can... Before Optimus can finish his sentence, Alita jumps forward as the two Viacons stand. Alita fights the two Viacons, showing prowess in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Optimus just looks on in shock, unable to comprehend what to do next, as he hesitates to participate in the fight. After a bit, Alita knocks down one of the Viacons, only to be knocked down herself by an energy blast from the first Viacon's arm blaster, shocking Optimus. Alita falls to her back, only to then look up and see the Viacon aim his arm blaster directly at her face. Looks like someone is rising up the ranks today. As the Viacon charges his blaster to kill Alita, the Viacon is then grabbed by the head and thrown back onto the ground. The two Viacons stand to see none other than Optimus standing between them and Alita, with a bit of an expression of perplexion on his face. Whoa. I... I don't... What the... Optimus and Alita fall to the ground greatly damaged by the electric shock. A weakened Alita looks up to see a group of jet Viacons, led by who appears to be either squadron leader. The leader and his Viacons descend upon the group. Blitzwing, I... You've allowed these vermin to undermine your authority. Why? The rebels, Lieutenant Blitzwing. The emblem of Alpha Trion is branded on their bodies. Blitzwing turns to see the emblems of on Optimus' shoulder and Alita's chestplate, 
Blitzwing's face then rotates to a red face, revealing a more aggressive personality. Well, what are you waiting for, scrap metal? Only one fate befalls those who bear the mark of the Autobots! The Pits of Kaon! A moment later, Vehicon soldiers forcibly bring Optimus and Alita into the giant metal coliseum at the center of Kaon. The sound of cheering and clashing metal can be heard from outside, causing Optimus to worry a bit. As the Vehicons drag Optimus and Alita into the prison cells, one of them drops a still weakened Optimus. Watch it! You gotta hold him steady! Sorry, he's just so heavy. We're all heavy. If none of you get your act together, then you'll be the ones to answer to! Just then, a loud metallic stomp is heard. Blitzwing returns to his normal face in slight fear. Star scream S And what answer exactly am I to respond to, Blitzwing? Oh, well, you see, these rebel troublemakers had snuck into the city. I was just taking care of them. Figured tonight's event could use some fresh metal. Starscream begins analyzing both Optimus and Alita. Hmm, well, well, well. You appear to have done better than I imagined. The pink one is one of Cybertron's most wanted, a true remnant of the Autobot Rebellion. Designation Alita 1. Wanted for treason and three counts of terrorism. A member of the Autobot Rebellion Corps, just like the one and we have held up now. She must have come to save her little friend. As for this one, however, what remains of the Autobot Rebellion Corps are all listed in the Cybertronian Registry. But this one, I've never seen him before. He's not registered. He's been designated as a stray. He claims to have no memory of himself, possibly a newborn. Not possible. Even with the Allspark intact, the Well of Allsparks doesn't have enough sufficient energy on to birth any more protoforms. Either way, I don't think we have to bother you-know-who about this. Place them in their cells and get them ready for the pits. It's almost time for the celebration. With pleasure, mine commander. Meanwhile, in the pits of Kaon, a giant Cybertronian takes on a group of Cybertronian citizens, ripping them apart piece by piece, bolt by bolt, until all that's left is the lone Cybertronian warrior. The Cybertronians in the stands all cheer for the mechanical carnage that's unraveled. Within a hallway, leading to an outside throne, a large figure stands within as Starscream approaches. My lord, your audience awaits. What is this I hear about a commotion within the Intersect District? Just a rebel spy and a rebel sympathizer causing trouble. Think nothing of it for now, my esteemed lord. The pits shall be their final resting place. Hmm. Very well, Starscream. As the crowd cheers, Starscream exits onto the balcony. Fellow Cybertronians, today marks another momentous victory for the champion of the Kaon Pits, Lugnut! And now that we've dispensed with exhibitions, let us begin the grand celebration with words from our most esteemed, valorous, and strongest warrior, the host of today's celebration, the former champion of the Pits of Kaon, and the grand leader of the Decepticons, the great and mighty Lord Megatron! Megatron then steps out onto the edge of the balcony, revealing his visage. Megatron! 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 They await your word, Lord Megatron. Just then, Megatron pulls and throws Starscream down to the floor, looking down at him with an expression of disgust. Your hollow overdone praise disgusts me, Starscream. 
Megatron then faces the people to address them. My people! My fellow Cybertronians! Today is a momentous day indeed. For today, we celebrate the anniversary of our triumph. The day the Decepticons tore down the chains of higher class tyranny and claimed victory over those who would deceive you into submission. Today, we honor the liberation of Cybertron from its so-called protectors, the Autobots, who cloaked their rule in lies and illusions of peace. I know many of you have heard the rumors, the whispers. Yes, the Autobots still linger in the shadows, remnants of a failed past, clinging to their empty dreams. They are relics, rebels too blind to accept the truth that Cybertron belongs to those who possess strength, the will to seize it. They do not understand that we, the Decepticons, are the true heralds of peace. A peace forged in power and purpose. No more empty promises. No more illusions. No more predetermination! Upset at his humiliation and at Megatron's hands, Starscream stands, leering at the back of Megatron's head with ire. Let today not be a day he remembered as a day of slaughter. Not merely a day of retribution upon those who defy us. No. Let this be remembered as the day Cybertron became truly free. Free from the shackles of weakness. Free from the hollow ideals of those who stood in our way. Today, we do not just mark a victory. We celebrate a new era. An era where I, Megatron, stand as the guarantor of Cybertron's future. Together, we are unstoppable. Together, we are the future. Together, we are Cybertron. Megatron! 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 Let the celebration commence! I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to check out our merch store, buy me a coffee page, and Amazon affiliate link linked in the description and pinned comment below. So you can help us expand the channel and give you guys higher quality content. Also, if you want to check out our original content, be sure to check out the playlists linked in the description below. With all that said and done, I'm JT Anime, and I'll check you guys later.